I want to ask Joseph Farah in the limited time we have. He's a busy guy. I want to cover Brexit. I want to cover Trump with him. But, you know, talk to one of the wise men out there, a true patriot. What point have we gotten to, Joseph, WND.com, where everything we've talked about is now admitted, our credibility is exploding, but instead the globalist left just says they're going to arrest everybody, and the Democratic platform now says arrest climate change deniers. I mean, it, it's, it's just crazy. It's bizarre. What is going on? Where do you think this is going? Well, it's not going in a, in a good direction, that's for sure, Alex. And thank you very much for having me on, by the way. I appreciate it. We haven't visited for a while. Oh, I, I had to I twist needed. your arm, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you liked me anymore. But, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in a world of hurt. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, there's not much good news on the horizon. We, we, we look for it every day so people don't go insane, but uh, it, it is hard to find. There, I, you know, I think you talk about good news. Uh, you know, I think what we saw happen in Great Britain uh, uh, last week was was some good news. You know, uh, I think I think the people, and it's not just people in the United States, obviously, are beginning to see so much of the kinds of things that we've been talking about, the, the terrible direction we've been going in, and they're reacting as best they can. The question is whether. You know, the ruling authorities are going to pay attention uh, to the will of the people. Uh, we've got an election coming up this year. I think as, as far as that goes, uh, I, you know, in the past, uh, you, you could argue whether there was a dime's worth of difference between uh, the Republican nominee and the Democratic nominee. We, we talked about that in 2004 and 2008 um, and uh, 2012. And, uh, you know, it was arguable. Uh, it's not it's not even arguable. It, it, it's not in this election. There's trillions of dollars worth of difference between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Would you agree? Oh, there is light years of difference. <laughs> and, and, and we see the establishment showing that. I mean, they're 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 so afraid. Why are they so afraid of Trump? Because he cannot be controlled. I mean, you know, this is a guy who, when he talks to the American people, they listen. Uh, he has, and they, you know, the media cannot control this guy. When I say he can't be controlled, I'm really talking about the media because what are they going to do? They have to stop covering him. They have to stop putting him on TV. That hurts their ratings when they do that. You know, now you're hitting them right in the bottom line. And this is what is so spectacular, I think, about this election. It's such a quantum difference from from you know the recent elections we've seen over many many years and he uh, does know his timing because all over the world nationalists and patriots are getting in there's a popular surge so that was my earlier question the paradox of huge global awakening world government out in the open totalitarian mm -hmm. and, and so people are really waking up but at the same time the left is re-entrenching and just getting more violent, more bizarre, more mentally ill, more anti-free speech. I mean, you know, I've been a big critic, you know, critic of the Republicans, just like you've been, and, and, and some fake conservatives. But with the left, it seems like they've collectively gone completely insane. Well, that's the danger. We've always, you know, we've always seen the totalitarian nature uh, of this, you know, movement that is, they call themselves progressives. I love that. Put that in uh, between quotes. Uh, you know, what, what are they progressing toward is the big question. And, um, you know, but ultimately, they're, we're seeing like never before the totalitarian nature of the left. And so that we're living in very dangerous times here. We're seeing, uh, you know, at the same time we see the expression in Great Britain uh, against globalism, for independence, for accountability from government. Uh, we also see, you know, I'll just point to a headline today. The Supreme Court overturns a, 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 a case in Texas. I wanted to bring that up to you. And then they <laughs> say, oh, when it's a split court, it leans left. So Scalia is right. magically out of the way. And now here's Kennedy again shooting down uh, state laws. Oh, yeah, what was going on in Texas? Now, I don't care whether you're you know, pro-life, pro-abortion, whatever. Does te the question on the table is, does Texas have the right, the power as a state, a sovereign state, to require certain, you know, uh, health and safety standards regarding abortion clinics. Now, that seems to me to be a, a no Yeah, there's more regulations on a Baskin Robbins than there is an abortuary. <laughs> exactly right. And so the Supreme Court knows better. Uh, how is that even 
you know, it just defies all logic. And we've seen this over and over again. You know, the totalitarian nature of this court, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's manifest. And so, you know, we're in the same position, maybe even in a worse position than the British people were. And, we're, you know, it's not because we're necessarily part of a European Union-style situation. No, instead we're our tyranny the is the control. Supreme Court. That's right. We're under the control of Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is acting sovereign over the states and over local jurisdictions and so forth. It's just it's the situation is untenable. And, so we need uh, a yeah. Washington exit. Mm -hmm. How do we do it? Is there a mechanism for that? The, you know, it's called the Constitution. That's the mechanism. But they just ignore it. I mean, the Constitution strictly limits the power of the federal government. But we don't see that. And you know, what about the checks and balances in the system? You know, isn't it supposed to be the legislative branch that makes the laws? How often do we see this president effectively making laws, issuing edicts to, you know, all 50 states? Uh, Arresting members people. of the press. In fact, I wanted to bring this next up to you. I have ABC News headline here where the United Nations, here's the headline I'm grabbing out of the stack, UN, this is ABC News, KRGV, more Central Americans headed to the U.S., and they admit they're here illegally, the UN's running the program in Central America, they have a deal with Mexico, they ship them up here illegally, and then they put them on buses inside the U.S. and then ship them to Democratic Party facilities. This is what we broke two years ago with our reporters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're coming up at the bottom of the hour. They're in McAllen. I mean, the Supreme Court ruled to stop it. He's violating the law. So when, so, so when he doesn't like what the Supreme Court says, he ignores it. But when mm -hmm. he does like it, he goes for it. Right. Exactly right. And you talk about the immigration issue. This is ultimately, I think, what uh, was the real catalyst uh, behind this Brexit vote. And here we are. We're, are we in better shape than they are or worse shape? The only thing we're going to be able to do, uh, honestly, from a pragmatic political standpoint, is to elect Donald Trump in 2016. You know, I can't say as I may have once uh, suggested to people, that it makes a heck of a big difference who we elect to Congress. We, we did that in 2010. How, how did that work out for us? You I know? was about to say, you and I admitted that our failure, <laughs> I mean, we were so sick of George W. Bush as more libertarian <laughs> patriots that we sat out the, the, the 2008 election because McCain was so horrible. Right. But, but I mean, now look at what we've got because, it, you know, I mean, McCain knew he was a shell. He knew he was a fall guy like a Don King boxing match. I mean, he, you know, he was there to take a dive. But we should have just still elected that puppet because he's an old, evil white guy. He wouldn't have had the race car to play. He couldn't <laughs> have got any of this done. Exactly. I mean, you know, in retrospect, who knows? But but the but the point is this, you know, what we need is not just shaking up Washington by electing a president. We've got to we've got to actually create or recreate an alternative political party in uh, that, you know, in Washington. And I, that's what I think Trump is uniquely positioned to do. Uh, and, you know, let me ask you a question, Alex. Do you believe these polls that are coming out now, you know, that he's 10 points behind Hillary and so well, forth. What does your, your gut tell you? I had a 30-minute conversation with Roger Stone yesterday, quizzing him about another Trump insider inside the campaign that I talked to. Mm -hmm. And he confirmed a lot of what I was told. And it was it was, it was was so staggering that I wrote a bunch of notes and then never, have, I haven't even covered it yet. I was thinking about covering it next hour, writing an article about it. Because, you know, you get a big story and you don't even know how to mm -hmm. deal with it. It's right. so big. But... Uh, he was uh, he was confirming some of the internal polling they've done, showing that Trump's pretty much in a dead heat everywhere. If they just do a fair poll, it, you know, if they cast it the way Hillary's casting it the other way, he's like 10 points ahead. Right. And, and, and he went on to say in a lot of key states he's way ahead, but he said many people are so intimidated. People ask, why is the left out stabbing people? Why are they out attacking? Why are they beating up old ladies when it makes them look so bad? They don't care. They want to scare you away from coming out to vote. They want to scare you from saying you'll, you're, you're for Trump. They've done their numbers. They've done their actuary. So the truth is, the, from the polls they've done in focus groups, uh, they're thinking upwards of 10 to 14 percentage of people, whether they be Democrat or Republicans or non-voters, folks that have been out of the system for a while, that really Trump's going to win with a Reagan-style landslide 
uh, but they think Hillary is just trying to act like she's really winning and having the media say it because they're looking at probably stealing the election. Well, that exactly uh, that is exactly what I have been saying now for for some time. I believe that Trump can can cause a political realignment in this country like we haven't seen since 1980. And what I don't base it on 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 the polls because with the polls you've got to actually see how they were pushing. And, people, and ex but also right? exactly, people are scared to say they're for Trump. That's why I wear a hat. Donald Trump hat when I'm downtown around you know communist areas because I want to get it in their face and they run in fear. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> right. My my uh my opinion has been based on the anecdotal uh relationships, the experiences I have with people. For instance, I will tell you, uh, I have a sister, an older sister, who voted for Obama enthusiastically the last two election cycles. Oh. Now I love her, you know. I just say she's misguided. We all have family like that. Yeah. Uh, she is on fire for Trump. She can't wait to vote for Trump. And it, it, this has caused, I don't know what it is about Donald, I mean, I honestly, because I, you know, I wish I had that magic to, to, for my own sister, right? And I see this over and over with people, not just my relatives, people I run into who, you know, you would think, or you have reason to believe that they are Democrats, liberals, progressives, what have you. And this is a, this is a whole different ballgame for them. Trump, the personality Trump, because of his outspokenness, his forthrightness. And look at that speech he gave about Hillary last week. What, I mean, that was amazing. Have we? That proves he's for real. That, I mean, I mean right. that he's so hardcore. That shows he, he is definitely not a shell for Hillary. We know that now. Have we seen a Republican presidential candidate go on the attack? And it was not personal. It was not. It, everything he said in that speech was dead accurate. It was as if, I mean, it would, you, you could have been listening to Alex Jones or Joseph Farah give that speech. That's what we've got. Now, look, you know, it's not, I'm not saying Donald Trump is perfect. I didn't even support him. And, the, it, you know, personally, I was a Ted Cruz guy. Yeah, but okay? The truth is he's got too much of a liberal background, but I, I, I've, I've gone back and done the research. That was because he was doing business with these people, and he's a uh -huh. nice guy. Uh, and in many respects, look at the whole gay issue. He is somewhat liberal on some issues. But the key is at least he's a nationalist that isn't out to get the country and wants a rising tide to raise all ships. And you have to admit, I think, just objectively, that he is be he is in the best position to challenge this woman, he because he will he will tell you exactly what she is, and you know it's going to be up to. That's why I say there's tr it's not a dime's worth of difference this time. It's trillions and trillions yes, of dollars. It's probably the last chance we have to elect a president that's going to, you know, give us the chance, not just to change direction, but to do a 180. And I really believe that's the opportunity. And that's why they're so scared of him. That's why I say he's unelectable, couldn't get the nomination, blah, 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 mm -hmm. because they know he's the best candidate. Their fear, you know, shows us that something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Let me ask you this question, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously you're a smart news guy who had the instincts to envision the whole Internet you know, resistance, the whole nine yards, one of the founding fathers, the current you know, a wave of uh, Liberty Worldwide, Joseph Farah joining us here today, WND.com. What do we hammer on most? I don't think there's been enough talk about how she sold us out to the communist Chinese with the missile secrets. Let me just throw that out at you. What about this? What about hammering the point that, I know you've done this, but, but I mean, that she gets $100 million from Gulf states that keep women as prisoners, but then runs and, and executes homosexuals, then she runs around to gay pride parades. I mean, the hypocrisy. What about hammering her Brian Williams moment? What do we do to reach out to her idiot supporters and get them out of their stupid trance? I think that, again, that speech by Trump was so perfectly crafted uh, to do just that. To turn people who, you know, out of anger, whatever, maybe ignorance, supported Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, in the primaries. But they know what Hillary is. They know she is as corrupt as anybody who's ever run for president before. And, you know, if they're going to vote at all, I think a lot of them, sure. and the polls even show this, that a lot of them will turn to Trump. That's why I say I think that we're, to we're looking at a major realignment here. Uh, it will not hurt, uh, you know, a lot of 
I got a lot of friends, even relatives who work in government in Washington, you know, uh, under under the dome. And they're worried about, you know, losing Congress. I I think Trump's going to help every Republican. I agree. Let me ask you the time we have left. What happens if they steal the election from him? I mean, don't they know he's just a manifestation of rising nationalism, populism, and disgust with corruption? Well, he's the... He's the biggest fear that Washington insiders of both parties have. That, again, that certifies for him. me that we're, <laughs> we're on the right track here with Donald Trump. I totally agree, but what happens if they do steal the election from him? Well, I mean, if they steal the election from him, it's all over. I mean, it's, you know, America's over, quite honestly, right? I mean, what, what, what can I do? I agree. <laughs> That's not rhetoric. We've really reached the point where it's do or die. Yeah. Oh, no question about it. In closing, and by the way, I want to ask you another question. Sure. I love interviewing you on your own show. What do you make of this? I'm sure you've seen it. This UN military convoys uh, all over the country. Now they're in Virginia, but of course we've seen them in many, many other states o- over the years. What, what, what do you make of this? What, what is going on that we don't know? They've got them. Uh, listen, I, I would just ask the question 15 years ago, just like you did, and and, and when this all started, maybe t- like 20, and then they've just got caches everywhere. Uh, they're newer equipment. They're not just, you know, old stuff they're refurbishing. Um, it's bizarre. And now all the news, it's the U.N. says this, the U.N. says that. The U.N.'s bringing in refugees to Texas. The U.N.'s going to watch our police departments. I think they're getting ready for a total collapse and maybe states not being part of the union. And I think they're getting ready for Civil War, too. I'm not saying it's coming, Joseph, but right. when they've got battle tanks being brought into the U.S., being shipped in, not out, uh, you know, Abrams tanks with U.N. on the side, something this way wicked comes. We'd be idiots not to think so. What do you think? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, you you have to ask yourself, what are the alternative theories? <laughs> I can't think of any. That's the that's the scary thing. And you mentioned earlier the UN role in uh, you know the the border and immigration from the southern border, but it is the UN that is also determining where these so-called Syrian refugees go. And they could activate them to start rioting, and just like they've done in Europe, and use that. I mean, these are brand new Hunger Games giant-style armored vehicles being shipped around the U.S. and cashed. We've got to cover this. Joseph Farah, WND.com. Thank you so much for coming on. All right. Keep the faith, buddy. Wow. He just brought up that topic. I need to cover that. We're going to cover that when we come back, along with the food shortage issue. 395% global food shortage. That's from FEMA. We're on the march. <laughs>